honestly, if you don't have students who are first passionate about the subject, nothing else is really going to stick all that well, right? So that's kind of actually job one, is getting the interest level up, and then it's my job as an instructor to kind of, again, provide the bigger picture and provide the historical sweep and provide the theoretical frameworks that they can use to make sense of what is, uh, what William James would call, right, the world of buzzing, buzzing, blooming confusion that surrounds all of us, right, to make sense of all these, these facts that are always assaulting our senses. I've also learned, and this might be more idiosyncratic of me, that I like to try to work s kind of satirical humor, I guess you could say, into my lectures. One of the things that humor and satire does is, I think, A, it makes information stick in your memory better uh, uh, if it can be attached to some emotion. And B, what humor does is also it makes things that sometimes we take for granted in the world seem strange and new and you look at it from a fresh angle. Supervisions are a really worthwhile way to get students to come out of their shell. Making students much more willing to offer up ideas and analysis that they might not be 100% sure, certain is correct, but you can't really make educational progress unless you're willing to make mistakes. And in a big lecture setting, in a big lecture hall, students, you know, even ones who are very confident in their grasp of the material of the class, can be very reluctant to pipe up and offer ideas because they're worried about what their peers are going to think of them, they're worried about what the instructor might say in response, and the expectations are just very different in the supervision, right? The idea that you have more flexibility and, and room for error uh, because that's the whole purpose, right? If you're not willing to make error, you can't progress as, as a learning individual. I save every email that students send me or every card that they send me uh, that says, thank you. Um, it is, to use a cliche, sometimes the little things, right? Just an uh, email that somebody's put, put five to ten minutes thinking about, because they don't have to do that. And I think increasingly, too, uh, you, in universities, instructors are worried about the relationship between them and their students turning into kind of a uh, supplier-consumer type relationship, which is not classically the way we think of universities. And so having that more personal connection with students makes it feel like uh, an enterprise that is a little bit more about community and having an impact and maybe even creating a peer um, down, down the road than it is just about serving a consumer's need or demand.